All right, today we are back under the hood of the Nissan Xterra and we are going to be replacing the electronic throttle control actuator uh, or as the rest of the world knows it, the throttle body. Uh, it's very quick and easy. It's sitting right on top of the motor near the front left uh, corner of the engine bay and uh, there's only a few vacuum and intake pieces that we need to remove uh, before we get to it. Okay, so before we get started, I want to talk a little bit about the part. Now, uh, the biggest thing is shop around for this part. The, uh, it, the price varies wildly between uh, different retailers. I got this part on Amazon for $109. Uh, my local stores are selling it between $120 and $150, depending on where you go. Um, and for original OEM parts through Nissan, they wanted a whopping $770 for this. So uh, just look around, don't just run to the dealership and pick it up. Uh, there's a lot of better options. Now, given this is a remanufactured part uh, versus an OEM original, but I really don't think that justifies, uh, you know, over $600 uh, price difference. So another thing is there is a specific bolt pattern when you take out the bolts and put them back in. And uh, so we're gonna put them, we're gonna take them out in this order. And then once we take them out, uh, I think they're all the same. I'm pretty sure they're all the same. But when we put them back in, we have to put them back in in this order. So um, pretty specific. I don't know really what the big deal is. It is going into a plastic piece, so that's probably why. Uh, they don't want you torquing too much on one side and breaking something. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started taking off some of the vacuum and intake parts and get to this guy and replace it. Start by removing the steel ring closest to the air box and disconnect this hose. Next, remove this engine cover and pull it off the top of the motor. It's a size 10 millimeter, by the way. Once you loosen the two front bolts, the back is actually just held on by a little pressure bit here. All right, so you can just yank it off and put it aside. Next, take a pair of pliers and just remove this vacuum hose from this front air box here. To remove this front piece here, you, had to, you have to take off this steel ring off of the front of the uh, throttle body, and then you have another two bolts in the back. I'm gonna take the bolts off first. Then take your screwdriver and loosen this metal ring closest to the throttle body. And the whole thing should just slide out. All right, so we're now at the actuator. Uh, we need to remove these hoses here, these two bottom hoses, and this one electrical connector. Now, these two hoses are actually filled with antifreeze. So uh, what you want to do is grab a container, and I actually have this old um, window cleaning solution um, uh, bottle here. Now I'm going to try this. I don't know how much fluid is in here. Um, I'm actually just going to slide this bottle down right underneath, open it up, and let it drain into this bottle. The other option, which I really do not want to do, is empty the system. Um, and that seems like a huge pain for something uh, this small. So I'm going to remove it. Hopefully um, I don't run out of space and then we'll be able to remove both these hoses and then take the actuator off. Okay then, that was only a little bit there. Let's try the other one. All right, here's the other one. Okay, that one's pretty much dry. So uh, this is all that came out. So uh, you do not need to empty the system. Some of the uh, manuals say you need to. That's uh, kind of crazy for the, to deal with this much fluid. So uh, I have them out. Just kind of tuck them up, pull them away from where you're working. So uh, obviously you're not gonna get any drips. And also, um, you know, you're not like, they're not in the way. So move those out of the way. There we go. Set this aside. And now we just got to remove this connector, which should just be a good old pinch.
Yep. So just pinch the tab right here and just pull it away. So now we've uh, pulled everything away from the actuator and now we're gonna unscrew it and remove it. All right, so we're actually ready to remove. Now remember, we gotta take the bolts out in a particular pattern. So it's uh, the bottom right first, top left second, bottom left third, upper right fourth. Uh, I, I found the, that the bit is just a number five uh, Allen wrench, effectively. So uh, let's start taking it off. Okay, now that it's removed, uh, it, now's a good time basically to just take a look around, make sure that uh, specifically this O-ring is in good condition. Uh, you may have to replace it if it's dried or cracked or ripped or whatever. Uh, mine looks good, so I'm gonna leave it. And then also the condition of this, make sure there's nothing blocking the airways, um, you know, any obstruction, any broken tines, anything in there. Um, but again, this one looks pretty good, so uh, all we need to do now is take our new one, put it back on, and reassemble. All right, so here's the new unit. Uh, basically, we're just gonna reverse the pattern. So line it up and put in the bolts. All right, so now that all the bolts are in and finger tight, uh, just go ahead and tighten them down in that same pattern. Okay, all the bolts are tight. Now uh, just reverse the entire process to reassemble. All right, that's it. Pretty quick and easy job, huh? So every time you remove the power from that actuator, there are some sensor relearn processes that need to be completed. Uh, if you need help with those, they're right here. Uh, if not, uh, thanks for watching. And as always, make sure you put in the comments below any comments, questions, recommendations for future videos. And again, thanks for watching. Bye.